This is a video I've been waiting to make for a little while now and I thought it was going to take a bit longer to get it out there but a couple of recent events have helped bring this video forward. So on the 6th of November 2022 I took my brand new MG4 SE standard range to a DC ultra fast charger to do a charging test as I was keen to see what the car would be capable of and if we could hit the peak 117 kilowatts advertised by MG and other media outlets and for anyone who saw that video and I shall link it above the charge went really really well the curve was really really good it was actually a shorter charge from 5 to 80 percent than the actual manufacturer recommended time as you can see in the video here we were hitting 88, nearly 90 kilowatts of power during this charge, which was actually pretty good, but I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit disappointed. Now you're asking why was I disappointed? Well, I was disappointed because I had done everything possible to warm the battery pack up. I had got it to a low state of charge. I had preconditioned the battery. I'd even tried things like yo-yo in to try and force as much heat into that pack to get the best optimum charge we could and having spoken with a few people and read a lot of comments in the video it almost seems it was down to probably three causes as to why we couldn't get those peak speeds first cause would be the charger could the car get enough power so mg4 has a 400 volt architecture which means if it receives that 400 volts or close to that, the only thing that would be restricting the amount of power it can receive would be the amps or the amperage. And as we can see here, although the voltage does come down a little bit, it's mainly the amps which reduce significantly. So the second item which could be an issue for the vehicle is the outdoor temperature and whether the battery pack was able to get warm enough. The MG4 SC standard range uses a lithium iron phosphate battery or better known as an LFP battery pack and as it's less energy dense and has a lower discharge and therefore it does struggle with colder climates but with plenty of battery preconditioning and a couple of alternative sources to get those cells nice and toasty, it shouldn't have too much of an issue getting that battery pack into an optimum state for ultra fast charging. And that brings me on to the third and final reason why this MG4 standard range LFP pack did not receive that 117 kilowatt peak charging speed. Now for anyone who's taken ownership of an MG4, one thing you would have experienced by now is buggy software. And I'd say 95% of all discussions, social media, everything about MG, anything negative is generally down to the software. Now I'll be the first one at the front of the queue to tell anyone just how good this car is to drive but it does let itself down with a few buggy things about the software. And this is why I feel that the software might have something to do with these limitations in the charging speeds. It's a brand new EV to market. It's got its teething issues and they will be resolved. And I do think that the charging issue is wrapped up in there somewhere. And if anyone remembers when Tesla introduced the LFP battery to the Model 3, it was played with calibration issues and was unable to perform anything like the nickel cobalt aluminium battery chemistry and changes to the software enabled the vehicle to keep the pack warm enough to become more efficient especially when it comes to charging and get those higher peak speeds which it was falling short on so what can we do to try and find an explanation for this? Well, with any problem, we need problem solving and that's process of elimination. So as the milder temperatures set in, I decided to head over to the next best thing to Ionity, which is one of Tesla's version three superchargers. Now the version three superchargers are a great candidate because each post will charge up to 250 kilowatts, up to 500 volts, and have a maximum current of 631 amps. So we're a little over 20% on the battery. We've preconditioned the battery for the last hour and 15 minutes. And we also did a little bit of yo-yo in on the way in as well, just to try and get those cells as warm as we possibly can. The outdoor temperature was in the double figures on the way over. So let's get on with the charge. And as you can see, straight away, we're already nearly up to 70 kilowatts. 
and then after that we get up to around 73 kilowatts and then it begins to plateau at this point. Now if we turn our attention to the Tesla app and look to see what the car is requesting we can see 74 kilowatts on there. Now there's always going to be some losses at these kind of speeds of charging but as you can see we are trying to get around that 80 figure which is where we got back in November but from this point onwards the car does really struggle to pull any more power than that and it actually remains at around 70 kilowatts until we unplug at 45% state of charge. Now if you compare this charging session to the one back in November, it's very very similar with only about a 10 kilowatt of power difference. But we are testing two different high powered ultra fast chargers here. And although we're not connected to an OBD reader and actually see the figures for this charging session, but having tried probably the fastest two chargers we could try in the UK. I think we've exhausted this avenue. So the second investigation is climate. Now obviously we are in a colder climate here in the UK and up until now it's been pretty cold, but we are back in the double figures. And one of the things which come to light this week was if you're familiar with electric vehicles and YouTube reviewers, you may have heard of Bjorn Nyland. And he did a couple of videos this week on the MG4 in Thailand. And currently in Thailand, they are experiencing 30 degrees Celsius daily temperatures. And during his testing, he experienced a couple of episodes during charging where he was unable to get over 80 kilowatts. And although he wasn't preconditioned to the battery, in these kind of climates and following driving the vehicle as well, there really isn't any reason why he shouldn't be able to reach those peak charging speeds or at least 100 kilowatts, which is exactly where we were stuck at during our charging test back in November and again today. Now, maybe his vehicle wasn't on the latest software. We don't really actually know that for sure, but my vehicle in particular has had the latest software updates. But like I said before, the software is quite buggy and this is a new EV to market. And of course that brings me on to the last subject of investigation and that is the software. Now, as I mentioned before, the software has been buggy since day one. This is a new EV and up until now there has been a couple of updates and no one, no one really knows the extent of what those changes of software has impacted on the car and it's charging. And up until today it has made no differences to my vehicle and I really hope I'm wrong but based on what I've seen on social media and from YouTube videos I genuinely think from what I've seen that the charging speed is locked by software or the buggy software is impacting the peak charging speed of this LFP pack. Now I'm no expert, I'm not a battery specialist, I'm not a software engineer and this is purely my opinion and I may be completely wrong but I'd love to hear what you think and if you agree with me or if you've got any suggestions of what else could possibly cause in this issue with the peak charging speeds for the LFP pack. And I do want to stress the peak charging isn't the be all and end all here, but it's good to know what the car is capable of and whether the literature supporting this vehicle is misleading or not. Anyway, thanks for tuning into another video. Thanks for supporting the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I shall see you in the next one.